Yeah. You can come up behind me. Yeah, you don't stand there. We love the support. There you go. There's mine. Yeah. I know, I'm just joking. Not too close. Yeah. Probably don't need this, but. <laughs> we need to have the support, yeah. Friends, everybody, how are you? Thanks for coming. You're the, the brave ones. Thanks, for, thanks, mm -hmm. thanks very much. Um, first of all, Tom Kenny sends his apologies. He's in Italy. Um, he's, his, his grandson Noah got picked to play for Ireland during the week, so he couldn't turn down the opportunity. And he scored a try for Ireland and got his first cap and all this, that and the other. So. But Tom sends his apologies, otherwise he'd be here. So that's the <laughs> yeah. first thing. Um, also, um, you know, sometimes you do group shows to introduce artists. And I, I, you know, while I am introducing these three great artists, I don't think they need introduction, really, because we know them of old, and um, they're, they're some, what I'm trying to say, I will say it eventually, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes a, a, a group show is like um, an introduction, whereas this is a celebration of, of, of uh, the work of Mary Van Kampen, Fiona Concanon, and Martina Furlow. Um, we know all of them for, for some time. Fiona, I know the longest, but she hasn't had a show here, but we've had work for a long time. Uh, we had Martina's first show here a couple of years ago, and it went so fantastically well. And Maria we've had for many years, and I don't know how many shows, Maria, have we had? Four, five, six shows? Yeah, a good few. A good yeah. few, and, it, and, and, and been in lots of group shows as well. So um, it's fantastic opportunity to uh, have them together. Now, Maria, I think you and Martina exhibited together, but then Martina is great connection to Fiona. So I just thought we had, gap is the wrong word, but we were looking at the calendar for this year and there was a kind of opportunity now. So the, actually the biggest thing I want to say is, is, is thanks to the three artists who were into the concept of doing a show at relatively short notice. So you kind of uh, were kind of brave and brilliant to get this work together, which is, I think, while, while quite different to each other, sits very well in the same space together. So I won't say anything else like that, because I'll probably steal your thunder. <laughs> Most um, of gone. <laughs> I'm awful sorry, I'm awful sorry. And um, so that's all I want to say. B uh, only to um, say welcome to Ethna Verling, our director of Galway City Museum, <coughs> or I should say the director of our Galway City Museum, uh, if I can put it that way. So I, uh, without further ado, Ethna Verling. Thank you. Say a few words. Thank you, Dean. Um, um, I'm delighted to be here today and very honoured to be asked to open this beautiful exhibition. As I said, um, Dean has spoken about most of the things I was going to touch on, <laughs> but, um, but I suppose maybe rather than going into anything autobiographical, the first thing I'd like to say is that this exhibition is so colourful. When you walk in, and when I walked in yesterday to have a look at the exhibition when it was, uh, I'd just been home, that was the first thing. I mean, you could say that about so much art, but there is so much colour in the room, uh, and there's so much kind of uh, emotion, I suppose, in the room as well, attached to so many of these beautiful works that we see here. Um, I spoke to each of the artists and or the painters um, about their work, and there's a lovely unifying themes in this work as well. Um, in Maria's work which it look, she looks, I suppose, a lot at memory and looking at what, it's a kind of like a composite of her life, which is, um, is wonderful. There's so much depth in the paintings and it refers to so many things that happened in her life. Photographs that her father took of her and her sister, and her times of, you know, beautiful photographs, which I'd love to see actually the photographs that inspired these because you speak about them quite a lot and it seems like they're very important it would be great to have them with the paintings. 
but also the, the themes that are, are of great interest to her. Um, and again, the landscape is a huge part of it, but also even the craft. And you can see the craft and the skill in the paintings as well. Her interest in knitting, her interest in crocheting, but her interest in nature. Um, so that's a beautiful um, aspect and that composite aspect. And then um, when we look at Martina's paintings, and we had a lovely chat earlier as well, again, a completely different, entirely different style, entirely different approach, um, but so complementary side by side. Um, and Martina's paintings, I understand well, what we were talking about. I mean, they're, they're, they reflect landscape again, but a lot of maybe inner landscapes as well are reflected in that. The depth of a landscape. I'm an archaeologist by profession years ago. Um, but we were talking about that, looking at like a section face, you know, we're looking at the depth of landscape, what's under the land. And I think there's a lot of that kind of feelings come up in the shapes and the colours and the textures that Martina's work. Um, speaks to. Um, I also think that there's probably a bit of existential questioning in there as well. Who are we? What is it all about? The human condition, I think. I, I hope I'm correct yeah. in saying that. Yeah. Um, then on to Fiona's. Um, again, so complementary to all of this, such a different style. Um, <clears throat> and this is very much about the landscape. These are recent works, I understand, by Fiona as well. And I think it's, as, as Dean was saying, it's her largest show um, and, uh, and, and also as part of this wonderful trio. Uh, again, very complementary to the others, but you don't, you, you know, that's not what, what is the important thing, but it happens that they work so well together. And we were just speaking a little earlier there about, about the material she uses, which is watercolours, um, but the depth she's getting in the watercolours, particularly the one behind James Harrell's head there, <laughs> there is such... <laughs> beautiful movement in the clouds and then the reflections but the clouds are really coming at you in a very three-dimensional way all of them again beautifully reflecting uh, the landscape but there's um there's a great I, I think in all of the work there's a lovely um or there's a there's a great uh, communication um from the work to me uh, i i feel i can feel the what the spirit of the work and I suppose that's something I maybe I just wanted to touch on was there's a collaborative aspect to it as well because they work so well together. You can see that, um, and they you know they, they look very well together <laughs> as well. But um, it's the collaborative um, piece. They remind me a little bit of Mary Swansea's work, you know, whose beautiful work that was done by Mary Swansea, um, and such an amazing collective of artists, women artists from that period. My favourite, E. B. Horn, and of course Minnie Jellett and Nora McGuinness and you know, there's, there was a wonderful, there's a kind of a feeling of that here now, I think, as well. Um, but one of the things that, there's a couple of themes I thought linked this work beautifully. One is the landscape, and that speaks very much to myself. Um, my father, was, uh, who died last year, was a landscape painter, Walter Barling, and he had us looking at views from when we were tiny children. We were, he was always, you know, he was a plein air painter, an impressionist. Um, and he was always bringing views home, if you like, bringing the work back to the house. And that was beautiful to see the landscape through his eyes and to understand the landscape. And then, of course, I, you know, he showed us castles and ring forts and standing stones and stone alignments and every class of a monument from when we were very small children as well. <coughs> and uh, that, I suppose, got, the apple didn't fall far from the tree and I went into archaeology. But that visual literacy piece, you know, the piece about reading the landscape and understanding the landscape, <coughs> um, was lovely as well to see the monuments on it. And I think that's something that we touched on um, there as well when I was, when I was chatting to, to Martina. Um, and I think it's also in, in Wexford, I, I believe, that Maria and Dick indeed are doing a lot of work around the landscape and commemoration and, and things like that. Um, but it's the, the other thing is the imagination and there's such amazing imagination in these paintings and we are really need imagination now more than we ever did um, in the face of so much hardship in the world. Uh, you know, there's a wonderful man called Rob Hopkins who's written a book called what, From What Is to What If and he, he analyzes the brain in terms of imagination and how important it is for science and climate change and how, how you know, if you, do, if you can't dream it, you can't be it. You know, if you can't imagine it, you can't see it or be it. And so for children, you know, for young people, 
you need to paint, you need to draw it and make it so that it, you can be it, you know, and understand it. And um, Ken, um, um, Ken Robinson was wonderful for that as well. I don't know if you knew him. He was a wonderful educator and wrote this book called Out of Our Minds, which was, you know, about uh, imagination. Um, I have a huge interest in art and mental health as well. Uh, we do a lot of that, or, or try to do a lot of that in the museum, working with various communities. And, you know, artists, are pe pe when there's an engagement for, say, people with, who are suffering from mental health, with art in, um, in a museum context, they say that there can be great benefits because of they're outside of a therapeutic session, a setting, you know, and so there's much greater growth and, I suppose, healing. Um, and that's why it's so nice, uh, we have such a dearth of art spaces in Galway, sadly. Um, it's wonderful to come into a room like this and see work, you know, there's a, you can feel the, the kind of healing nature of it, I guess. Um, you know, on that kind of piece then about, you know, I think <coughs> one of the big jobs of art, isn't it, is, is about truth. You know, it's about telling you some truth that you didn't understand, maybe yourself. That's why when you, you know, see a great movie or when you read a great book, you kind of think, oh my God, I never thought of something like that before or I never, you know, it, it really opens you up and it makes you more uh, compassionate and makes you a better person, in my view, all, all of art does. But Paula Rigo, who is one of my favourite painters, a wonderful Portuguese painter, she said, you discover things in the making of a painting. It can reveal things that you didn't expect and things you keep secret from yourself. I love that idea, you know, that when you're making work, I find that if I'm writing or something, you find you're writing something, you think, oh, I never knew that about myself, or, you know, something comes out. <coughs> Um, so I'm not going to bore you too much with all these lofty thoughts, except to say maybe now um, at the end that I found another great quote, um, because another artist that I felt his spirit in here was Paul Gauguin, mm -hmm. and a uh, wonderful colourist as well, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, such a marvellous colourist, <coughs> and I find there's so much wonderful colours in these paintings. Um, you just, you know, it does something really good for us. So he said that painting is the most beautiful of all the arts. And it, in all, all sensations are condensed. Contemplating it, everyone can create a story at the will of her imagination, and with a single glance, have his or her soul invaded by the most profound recollections. No effort of memory, everything is summed up in one instant. A complete art which sums up all the others and completes them. So that's my... Uh, Final word on it. Thank you so much for being here and for giving me this privilege. Do you no. want to have a word? Say anything? No, thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all been shared and we're very shy. Okay, no, they don't want to say anything. That's fine. Ethna, that was brilliant. And whoever suggested Ethna. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, Thank yeah, you so brilliant. So the show was on for about a month. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Come again. Buy the art. Buy the art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks again for coming. <laughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Seth. That's brilliant. Thanks, Millions. Oh, can I just wipe this up? Or oh, is it off? No. Oh, yeah, you know, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>